And Pat, when you're not um, in, in doing the flowers and when you're not, um, when you're not cleaning up the streets, uh, what do you like to do as, as a pastime besides? I'll tell you what I do, Barry. I join every sort of an environmental group that you can imagine, and there's so many of them in Westport. And um, I uh, love meeting up with the gardeners. The gardeners have great knowledge. That was one of the first things I did. The gardeners love nothing better than sharing their knowledge and sharing extra plants. And it has put me miles ahead in my knowledge because they have great experience. And um, it's, um, it's mighty as well. There's an awful lot of environmental groups and um, to do with uh, sustainable travel. And even behind you there now, we've packs, you know, this plastic free shop, you know, and um, places like that are all over the town and it's starting to emerge now as these are the new groups, you know. And I, I enjoy reading about uh, the environment and gardening and anything to do with biodiversity. And so that keeps me busy, you know. But, uh, and yeah. where do you think we're headed with this climate change uh, debate, uh, Pat? There should be no debate. There's no debate about man-made climate change. It's absolutely man-made. And we, it's, it's, it, we're it, heading it, into trouble, Pat, are we? We are heading into trouble. You know, we're not big trouble. targets. But the thing is, the tricky thing is, you don't want people to shut down that, it, it, that it's not solvable. I have agonised about various things to do with the environmental movement and um, at the end of my fact checking I found out that not only is there hope, not only can we do something, but it is even, the situation is even better than might first be imagined. We just have to, you know, every journey starts with the first step and no matter what little thing you can do, do it, it's brilliant. and. The, the second thing you need to do, if you do anything for the environment, make sure you tell people about it, because um, it, 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 by, by uh, exposing people to uh, these um, actions that they can do, uh, these little things, it, it, it subtly changes the way a community thinks about these issues. And um, it all can be done, and uh, we just need to do more. We need our politicians to ask the hard questions and get going because sometimes I fear Westport is not ready for climate change. And one of the, one of the things as well is uh, we need to think of biodiversity as a solution for climate change. You know? And Pat, what, what do you think that the ordinary man and woman on the street can do at home? Sure, look at Barry. There was a time when everyone used to eat fish on a Friday and it's the most simplest thing that anyone can do. Have your fish, instead of having your steak, have a fish on your Friday or have a meat-free day and you will be doing a mighty thing for your carbon footprint. Another thing that you can do for biodiversity and it's the easy way and it's the best way in your garden. Cut your lawn at the highest setting every six weeks only after the dandelions, um, before the dandelions go to seed and you will be doing a mighty thing for the bumblebee. And it's often the way that we just need to get people into different habits. And they're, they're easier things to do rather than more difficult, you know. Well, Pat, to be, to be honest, uh, not praising myself, but yeah. I, I cut the lawn every six weeks. But that's, that's, that's mainly due to laziness on my behalf, oh, though. Oh, it's not laziness. <laughs> no, I, say Bar I'm going to say Barry's a new convert. He's a new convert. No, but I tell you, with this, <laughs> <laughs> with this interview, Pat, I, I, I've, I've learned a bit. I've learned a bit. And oh, uh, yeah. um, so, so the crux of what you're saying is if we get together and think together yeah. and get the government on side, yeah, that's the, you it. know, the, there is a way, there is hope, there is light. When the councillors knock on your door, say, what are you doing about the environment? Because that is our future. That is Westport's future. Uh, everything that we need to, to sustain ourselves is, um, is out there and it just needs to be utilised. The government needs to, for instance, pay the farmer to uh, help biodiversity and do, um, cut their carbon footprint and things like that. And it's, it's not, some, some things are not valued properly, you know, and they need to be. And if they, if they have to pay the farmer a few good extra, then so be it. You know, that is the value for us. 
Well, at the end of the day, we want our children and grandchildren to, to breed fresh air. We don't want to be looking at flowers in a museum. This is a, this is a problem, you see. You know, you, you, you're going to hear about a thing called tipping points, where it's runaway climate change, and we do not want to go there, where there's glaciers melting, where there's um, storms of greater force coming on our coast, and um, places getting flooded and things like that. You know, we need to watch out for that and we need to do it now, you know. So, like, I do often think, well, geez, if the Vikings were invading in 10 years' time, we'd be on it now. But people find it hard to imagine that something that they cannot see is so dangerous for us and we just need to get going on it and I think we can do it. I think there's great community in Westport and there's great community in Ireland and I, I, I really do believe we can do it. And Pat, just to go on record, yeah. I just want to say yeah. you're an absolute gentleman and thanks for the interview. Well, thanks very much, Barry. No, it was, it's always great to meet you. And uh, hopefully now we'll set a few people on their journey. Thanks, Pat. All right.